Hello guys, welcome back to A7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily A7 Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the frame analysis. In this lecture, we are going to find out the support reaction for this frame to draw the shear force diagram and also to draw the bending moment diagram for this frame. So we have to analyze this frame. This is a frame consists of one beam and one vertical member known as the column. So and here we can see here the rotor support while here we can see the hinge support so in the horizontal load of 10 kN is acting at the joint of beam and column and also this beam is loaded with a uniformly distributed load of 3 kN per meter the beam the beam length is 8 meter while the length of the column is 6 meter so to analyze this beam first we have to name its point let's suppose this is A and this is B. So this is rotor support it can only resist the vertical load. This is RA and this is a hinge support so it can resist the vertical RA Y and also it can resist the horizontal load R this is RB so it will be RBX because this is a hinge support so hinge support can resist both the vertical and horizontal load. Now we have to find these R A, R B Y and R B X. Let's take the summation of moment at point B is equal to zero at this point, and we take the clockwise moment is taken as positive, and anti-clockwise taken mom moment is taken as negative. This is just the sign convention. I'm just using such sign convention. So the moment at point B, this R A is the clockwise around point B this RA creating the clockwise moment about point B so RA clockwise is positive multiplying with the moment arm so RA is RA and moment arm for RA is 8 meter because the distance from RA to point B is 8 meter this 10 kN creates no moment because this force goes through the point B so there is no moment arm so there is no moment for this load the other load is 3 kN per meter so it will create moment in the anti-clockwise direction about point B so 3 kN is a distributed load so first we have to convert into concentrated load so it is anti-clockwise direction so it will be negative minus 3 multiplying it with the whole distance which is 8 multiplying with the moment arm the moment arm for this distributed load will be the half of this 8 which will be 4 because the distributed load to convert this distributed load into pointed load we have to multiply it with 8 meter now this concentrated load will act at the center and for the center this moment arm will be 4 meter now that's why I write it 4 here so these are the two forces that create the moment about point B Summation of moment at point B is equal to 0. Now I have to shift this value, this to the right side. So R 8RA is equal to the 96. So RA comes out to be 12 kilonewton. So I can write it here the RA is equal to 12 kilonewton. Now I have to find the RBY, which is also, also a vertical force. So I have to take the equilibrium equation summation of y vertical forces is equal to zero. Summation of all the vertical forces is equal to zero. So the vertical forces, the upward force is taken as positive and the downward force is taken as negative. This is just my sign convention. You can choose opposite as well. So the upward force is Ra. It is taken as positive. The other one is Rby. I suppose it that it is in upward direction so it is also positive and this load is acting downward which is 3 kN per meter distributed load so convert into pointed load we have to multiply this with 3 with the 4 with 8 meter the whole distance so this 3 multiplied by 8 is acting downward these are only the vertical forces while this is a horizontal load and this RBX is also horizontal load so we are not taking here because we are only interested in the vertical forces. So now to find the RBY, we have to shift these all values 
and to the right side so it will be 24 minus ra and now 24 minus ra where ra is 12 so rby comes out to be 24 minus 12 is 12 kilonewton so it means that ra and rb are equal in reaction it is also 12 kilonewton now we have just one horizontal force 10 kilonewton and hence the rotor support cannot take the horizontal load so the 10 kilonewton will be directly transferred to this support it means that this hand support can take this 10 kilonewton load so rbx will directly be equal to the 10 kilonewton because there is no other support to take this horizontal load so this is the first step to find out the support reactions now for to draw the bending moment and shear force diagram I have to draw the free body diagram for this frame so let's suppose this is again the column and this is the beam now this 12 kilonewton load is acting upward and this this is just the free body diagram so I can draw the shear force diagram from this free body diagram so the 12 kilonewton load is acting upward is the reaction RB is also 12 kilonewton so I can also write it here 12 kilonewton so and this RBX is 10 kilonewton so it is 10 kilonewton and this reaction is 10 and this force applied is 10 kilonewton so this force is also is 10 kilonewton now this load is 3 kilonewton per meter so it is here is 3 kilonewton per meter now we have to draw the shear force diagram from this free body diagram but first let's consider that this free body diagram and this is 12 kilonewton is acting in upward direction now to in it to fire to make equilibrium in this joint this 12 kilonewton will also be transferred in this way in the downward direction so this 12 kilonewton is in equilibrium now with the vertical load similarly this 12 kilonewton load will be transferred here to this point so it will also be 12 kilonewton so this is the way how to transfer the load in a free body diagram in the frame analysis so now this 12 kilonewton is transferred to this 12 kilonewton acting downward and now this 12 kilonewton will be acting in upward direction so to for, to make an equilibrium again this load is acting downward so it is supported here with the 12 kilonewton and this distance is 8 meter while this vertical distance is 6 meter now if you want to make an equilibrium so this 12 kilonewton and this 12 kilonewton is equal to the total load acting on this beam because 3 multiplying with 4 it is 24 so 12 plus 4 12 is, is equal to 24 so this is in equilibrium so the whole joint and the whole frame is in equilibrium now to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram first I have to draw their reference line these are the reference line for column and beam so for the column there will be no shear force diagram because there is no transverse load acting on this column we can see here there is no horizontal load on this column that will produce the shear force that's why the shear there will be no shear force diagram for this column but on beam there is a transverse load acting on this beam so we will have shear force only for the beam so for column we have no shear force diagram so for the beam I write it here this is a shear force diagram so for the beam this load is acting 12 kilonewton in upper direction so I will move it in upper direction and this is a magnitude of 12 kilonewton now this load is acting downward this is a uniformly distributed load of 3 kilonewton per meter so over the distance of 8 meter so 3 multiplying with 8 it comes out to be 24 so 24 is the total load acting in downward position so I will make this arrow in downward position because this load is acting in downward so I will subtract this 24 from this 12 because 12 was acting upward and this 24 is acting downward so 12 minus 24 I get minus 12 it means 
that my reaction here will be minus 12. So this will come to minus 12 kN. And we see here that this reaction is also 12 kN, which is right. So this is positive shear and this is negative shear. So we can withdraw the shear force diagram for this frame. Now to draw the bending moment diagram, I have to take help from this shear force diagram for this frame. But first I have to remove this space so I have free space for my bending moment diagram. Now to draw the bending moment diagram, again I have to draw the reference line. This is for the column and this is for the beam. So now to draw the bending moment diagram is there is no shear force diagram. So this is a zero shear force diagram. So again the bending moment would also be zero. Now to draw the bending moment diagram we have to take help from our shear force diagram because the bending moment diagram depends on the shear force diagram. So we can see here that this this triangle we can see here, here ends up to the distance of 4 meter because this total is 8 meter so it was a uniformly distributed load so it it's here makes the shear force 0 at a distance of 4 meter. So this is a triangle and we will find the area of the triangle so we will get our moment diagram. So the this is a triangle and this is also another triangle. This, this distance is also 4 meter. So, first of all, to find the area of this triangle, A1 is equal to the area triangle is half base into height. Base is the 4 multiplying with height which is 12 kilonewton. So, this comes out to be 24 kilonewton meter. So, it means that the area of this triangle is 24 kilonewton per meter at a distance of 4 meter here up to this point. So I will draw the shear force bending moment diagram here and I will write 24 kilonewton meter. Similarly this tri triangle is a magnitude of 12 kilonewton and is a distance of 4 meter so it is the same magnitude as this triangle. So I will also find the area of this triangle. It will also comes out to be half base into height minus 24 before it was plus now it will be minus 24 so so minus 24 and plus 24 this was plus 24 and if I add this minus 24 to plus 24 it will become 0 so the bending moment diagram will come out to be 0 here at this place so we have maximum bending moment of 24 kilonewton meter here at the mid span here at this point which is a midpoint for this beam 4 meter. So this is the way how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for any frame. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you for watching our video.